Hey guys, welcome back. So my name is Monica and I am, if you don't know me, I am a senior nursing student and I have um, one more semester left, so I'll graduate in December of 2019. Um, so I just wanted to do this video about pathophysiology because, you know, everyone's nervous about it. It's usually your first big kind of nursing class and everything and everyone's usually pretty nervous because, you know, the grading skill and everything, it's a new class, you know, it's pretty intense, and I get that. Um, so if I could, like, relieve any um, kind of anxiety or preconceived notions about the class, I would love to do that. Um, I am a tutor for the class. I have tutored this class for a year now, so three semesters, and so I know um, a good amount about the class. Um, I did do really well, and actually, um, you know, I didn't do that awesome in anatomy and physiology too, and I ended up getting um, a 93 in pathophysiology. So just, you know, a warning. So, you know, not really a warning, but if you didn't do that well in anatomy, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna fail patho. Um, so yeah, so here's kind of like my tips and tricks and how really to study from the class from like a student's perspective when I was in the class and tutoring as well, um, a tutor's perspective. So, um, First of all, if you didn't know, pathophysiology is um, the subject of studying diseases. So anatomy and physiology is a great um, kind of pre-class because it gets you into the normal processing of the body and how the body should normally function, you know, like the heart, brain, endocrine system, all that. So patho is going off of what happens when those systems are messed up and disease happens you know so you, when you go into the heart you go into like coronary artery disease um, myocardial infarction so heart attacks and then you know when you talk about neuro you talk about all these you know big kind of neuro diseases you know like parkinson's huntington's um myasthenia gravis so you're going to learn all these different diseases that are associated with symptoms that you learn not systems symptoms systems like you learn in um, anatomy and physiology um, so yeah, so this is a big memorization course as well. Um, so you're gonna have to study a lot of different diseases and kind of know like what is the symptoms of each, you know, and like what are kind of the big features. Um, and I get it, you know, I've, I've been there, it's tough. Um, but if I were to say something good about um, when you're studying them is to try and find out like distinguishing factors between each. Cause there are gonna be diseases um, uh, especially like in neuro and everything about how they're they're very similar um you know you have like huntington's and parkinson's and so you have to find out like well they both involve like the brain and everything um so you have to find like distinguishing factors between the two so what makes like parkinson's different from huntington's and that's like the really standout factor that's really going to help you during the test because if you're just looking at names and everything it's going to look really you know, like na certain names for diseases don't help with what's going on with them, like Parkinson's and Huntington's. You really have to know like the distinguishing factor between them um, and stuff like that. That's really going to help you. Um, so if I were to say anything, when you're studying all these diseases, try to find the main points of each and how they're different from each other. Um, and that's really going to help you on the test. You'll be like, okay, so I know this one. You know has this and this and that can really help um, another tip that I have too is that when you're and this is just a testing tip too um, when you're doing the test it can get kind of make you kind of you know, nervous most people are pretty anxious during a test and so what I would really recommend if you like practice it um, too and try it is to cover up the answers um, that way when you read the question like the first thing that comes to your head is going to be usually correct and that way when you won't when you read the multiple choice you won't get kind of like tripped up and be like oh wait is it this or is it this you know that can that can get tough especially when you're in between two so if you can cover them up before that way you can kind of think of the answer in your head and if that's you know an answer then you kind of know that's going to be the correct one um so that can kind of help too and i would i definitely practice that um, if you can, if any, like, practice questions or anything, try doing that method. If that works for you, great. If not, you know, that's okay, too. Um, but that kind of really helped me um, not get so overwhelmed by the different, you know, answers and everything. Um, so, yeah. Also, too, um, it's probably usually the first class or kind of thing when 
you have a lot of like select all that apply questions and those can be really difficult. Um, so again, I mean, this is different for everyone, um, at least for my school. If they have a select all that apply, it'll usually be two answers or more. Usually won't be one, but that's different for everyone. So don't, you know, take that with a grain of salt or something. Um, something too for Patha, what I really loved, and if you don't have this, I'm sorry, but our professor would make kind of learning objective worksheet, uh, kind of packets, and that way you just kind of like fill out what was on there. So for example, um, she would have like, this is, oh gosh, what unit was this? This is the neuro functioning. So she would have, and please ignore my handwriting, it's really bad. <laughs> so she'd have like headaches, and she'd have the difference between migraine, cluster headaches, and tension headaches. And that way I would just fill out the path of in between and the symptoms of it. Um, and that way, like, you know, because you're reading the book, you know, it can kind of hard, like, which stuff is really important, which stuff is just kind of filler information, you know. Um, that way, like, if your professor has, like, especially stuff like they have like kind of bullet pointed on their PowerPoint, that's gonna be really important information. And especially if they make like kind of a learning objective sheet, um, that's gonna be like stuff that you like have to know. Um, so that's just kind of a good differentiation between like, and it's always difficult with every teacher, you know, like, um, but what's important and what's not, I get it. Um, but if you are lucky enough to like, you know, have PowerPoints, which most people are, um, and, if you have like a worksheet or something or type up your own notes, those are really important to know. Also too, like when professors go off on stuff, um, if they start like talking like really heavily during a lecture about like, um, for example, like um, meningitis, you know, like if they really talk about like signs and symptoms and that, that that's good stuff to know. You know, you really have to, um, if the professor puts a lot of importance on it, then it'll probably be on the test. So um, that's good stuff to know as well. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, also, too, um, studying wise, what I always did for patho is um, I would kind of try to go over it every day. Um, I wouldn't do it for like hours upon hours, and then this is before a test. So, like, not studying for an exam. Just I would kind of take time every day just to kind of go over my learning objectives, um, and that really helped me. I think repetition in this class is the most important thing. So if you keep kind of repeating, what is this? You know, what is spinal cord contusions and all of that? You know, you kind of go over it a little bit every day. It really does help. And I know it's hard to find the time and everything. I get it. But even if it's just 15 minutes, just going over your notes for a lecture that day, that really does help. And that really does make a difference. And I've seen a big difference in my students. Um, who tell me that they do go over a little bit every day and how much it has helped them in their memory of everything. Um, so that's kind of something that helped. And then when it comes to studying for an exam, I'd really recommend, at least what helped me and what I always recommend for my students is kind of hunkering down a week before. So if you have a test on a Friday, that Friday before you really start studying. Okay, so this is when you take a lot of time, a lot more time. You know, you would go over your patho notes, you know, if that helps you to, like I like to go over my um, notes and then I like to like be verbal about it and that really helps me um, or teaching it to other people. So um, if I'm talking about like, um, let's think, um, cerebral vascular attacks, so strokes. So how I would go over that is I would like kind of re like talk out loud. And I get that can be difficult like in a library or something, but even if in your room, if that, you know, just do whatever helps you, um, that really helped me. So I would like say out loud, like, you know, if it's hemorrhagic, you would not give them like aspirin. Um, if it's ischemic, like this happens. And um, so when I was, I would um, like saying like the diseases verbally really helped and also, um, like teaching people so like I would ask so I'd be with like um, my study partner or something and like I would ask like him a question about you know what is um, you know uh, spinal cord laceration the difference between that and a compression and then he I'd think of the answer in my head and he would answer 
then he would ask me a question and I'd have to answer it. Um, I think that really helps too, like teaching others as well. And um, But again, that's just your learning style too. Some people like to hear stuff again, so they'll record the professor talking and then listen to it like on their way to school or um, in the gym or something. So there's definitely a, different, a lot of different methods you can use, um, which is nice. Um, yeah, definitely a week before was kind of my golden standard um, to really start studying. So I'd go over like my guide learning plans every single day. I would go through, um, I'd start from the beginning, um, just because usually the stuff that you learn like the day before, it's still gonna be kind of fresh in your brain. So I always took like the stuff that we first learned and go over that and then start and then go and go and go. Um, that really helped me because usually like the oldest material is the one that you kind of kind of forgot about a little bit so going over that first really helped and I'd go over um, all of them not all in one day because that's a lot but I'd like go over the first part for you know an hour take a break do like health assessment um, homework and then go back to another learning plan quiz myself do all those and that really helped me Yes. Um, also, too, I. Oh, sorry. <laughs> also, too, if you are lucky enough to have a tutor, not all schools do, but if you do have tutoring that, that is offered, and especially if it doesn't cost anything extra, I'd highly recommend it. It even if you're like, oh, I'm gonna get an A in the class anyway. Like, it's still really nice to have that students perspective of the class you know they've been through it before they did really well so knowing kind of what they did and kind of like oh I remember this from the test that can really help also too it's nice to have because we did it like I tutor in for an hour um, every week for each group that I do so that's an hour every week that you're already going over information so that's really nice too Plus you can ask them questions in addition to your professor. If the professor explains something really confusing, it's good to have another person to ask. So if you are lucky enough to have tutoring, I highly recommend it. Another thing too, um, a lot of schools do use ATI. If your school doesn't, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, but if your school does use ATI, what um, our professor recommended to us and what really helped me kind of get a good condensed um, information about a disease was the ATI, I think it's the med medical surgical, yeah, so it's the ATI medical, adult medical surgical book. Usually people will take this in like their medical surgical rotation and use this book, but for patho, the diseases are, they kind of break it down really condensed, like kind of the main points, and that way I'd go over those in addition to looking at my learning objectives and everything just to kind of get a condensed version um, and look at it more. They also have application questions in every kind of chapter area. Yeah, so those are kind of good practice questions to go over in your head sometimes too. Like, um, okay, for like chronic, so COPD, chronic, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder, they kind of just had like, a, you know, the kind of main summary points, you know, what to do with these patients, what the disease is about, and that kind of thing. So most of these questions that you're gonna have in these tests are going to be pathophysiology questions. So about the disease process, what are signs and symptoms? It's not going to be, you know, usually a ton of nursing process. Like, what would you do in this case? Um, like, what kind of medication? Because most likely you haven't taken pharmacology yet, but it's going to be mostly about the disease process. Like, what population is most at risk for this? Um, that kind of thing. So if you were to be like, oh, gosh, like, what kind of dress would I use? Like, it's probably not going to be stuff like that, but... Yeah, so I really recommend using the ATI book if you do have it. It can kind of have a good summary of everything as well. In addition to, this gets to be kind of controversial, a lot of people read the book and do the assigned readings and a lot of people don't. I was one of them that did do the readings and I really liked it. You know, my professor was really good about like, if it gets down to like a molecular level, we're not gonna do that stuff. So I was like, Okay, <laughs> um, but that's also time when you get more detailed information because during a lecture they only have so much time to go over all the information and they're not going to get through like every single detail 
that you that is kind of good to know. So at least for me, it really helped reading, doing the readings in addition to everything. And that was also time when I got to kind of go over the information. I would add stuff into like my lecture notes that weren't in lecture that I thought were important and made it more simpler for me to understand. Because sometimes the book does a really good explanation. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's more complicated. Sometimes, so I liked the explanations sometimes in the book, so I'd write those down or just little tidbits about these diseases that I really liked, and I wrote those down too, and those were really good for me. So, yeah, so that's kind of my tips and tricks for patho. It is a hard class, but you will get through it, okay? So, you know, I knew people that didn't take any time studying, and they didn't do well. And I knew people that, you know, put a lot of work into it, and you should because you know, this is the career you want. You want to be able to know this stuff because all the diseases you learn in patho, usually, not always, will come up again. Whether it be your medical surgical, your maternity, you know, advanced kind of critical care stuff. These are all going to come back. So as long as you have a good basis of those, you know, there's going to be like tricky diseases where you'll probably never see them again. But you know, stuff like Parkinson's and heart failure like right side versus left side, that's gonna come up again. So this is not like information just to be like, oh, whatever, like it's good information to know. Um, that being said, I really did like the class. I think that it taught me a lot. I really enjoyed learning about that. I'm kind of a geek, I like learning different things. So I really enjoyed it. It is difficult, but you will get through it, okay? So just take a deep breath, make sure to treat yourself after an exam and get a hot bath. Um, Go get coffee with your friends or something and you will do great in patho so yeah i hope this helped you it really you can do it and after you're done you'll be like oh you know i did it so yeah i hope this really helped you i hope you all have a great semester and i'll see you later bye